The horrifying Shinji Mikami is back doing what he does best, with his exceptionally crafted survival horror game. Perfectly balanced gameplay with stunning environments keep you feeling in control, but you never really are. The combat is exceptional. The wide variety of weapons feel powerful while giving you a lot of scope to play in your own style. The environments are beautifully crafted, with great use of lighting and atmospherics, plus the addition of an unnerving soundtrack brings together a terrifying sense of atmosphere. This game is a great example of what a survival horror should be. Unbearably tense, challenging, and most of all rewarding. At first the plot seems simple. Three detectives answer a distress call at a mental asylum to find a bloodbath. Separated from his co-workers, the main character, Sebastian Castellanos, finds himself in a desperate battle to survive. It soon becomes clear that not all is what it seems. The many random episodes thrown in during the game mean there is no straightforward storyline. It almost seems that these moments are just an excuse for the art team to create some strange and iconic environments, which they certainly did. Tango Gameworks employed a 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio and a limited player hub for this game, which really helps bring the cinematic experience to life. The overall beauty of the environments really gets highlighted more, with composition being a focus for many of the key points throughout the game and the animated cutscenes. Although there were occasions during the game where this transition caused some pretty painful deaths. But once you got used to this, it does add to the game's overall aesthetic. Even though the storyline leaves you as baffled as the main character, what the fuck? The scenes are breathtakingly iconic, each with its own distinct personality and horrors that await you. The overall graphics are fantastic considering it was released over all five platforms, both current and next gen. Although there are some poor textures within the game, especially close up, some texture popping within cutscenes, and frame rate drops at times, this doesn't detract you from the overall quality of the game especially considering you'll be worrying more about what's coming around the next corner than staring at some of the textures on the wall. The environments really do add to the gameplay, giving players a variety of open and horrendously claustrophobic areas to travel through. The game promotes exploration within these environments, but be warned, there are a wide array of traps, tripwires and alarms to add to the danger that awaits you. These traps can be disarmed to bring you much needed parts, but do so at your own risk. If you get it wrong, well, you know the rest. Caution and patience are your greatest assets when traversing through this game. The stealth gameplay is a nice touch, offering the player more than one option to take on each area, especially when resources are really low. Sebastian can use objects to hide inside or under to avoid any potential threats. Bottles can be used to distract an enemy, blow up a nearby trap, or disorientate them to pull off a stealth kill. This can be really satisfying once you pull it off, saving you valuable resources that you know you'll need later on in the game. Although, this often proved more difficult than it was worth, with the AI being extremely tuned to where you are. The combat is exemplary. The weapons feel powerful, especially when upgraded. You have the usual suspects when it comes to your arsenal, a pistol, shotgun, sniper rifle, but the greatest asset has to be the agony crossbow. This powerful weapon gives you a lot of versatility, whether you want to create bolts that explode, blind, or even freeze the enemies. Matches are the last so-called weapon that you have in your possession. Once you manage to down an enemy, you can burn the body to stop it getting back up again. Timed perfectly, you can also set a standing enemy alight with the same match as well. This variety of weaponry and stealth gives you the flexibility to decide how you want to traverse the game. As with every survival horror game, there is just about enough ammo to deal with everything, and often gives you a decision to make. Do you take on this enemy, using the last bullets to go for the headshot, or do you back away and regroup to plan a better scenario? These split second choices really add to the tension the game provides, although the enemies often leave you no room for second thoughts. In the brief respite from the fighting and tension, you often find yourself trying to scavenge the environment for resources, but always wary that anything could be around the next corner. These items are ammunition, syringes, and a green fluid, which is the in-game currency. This is used in a peculiar hub zone watched over by a very inexplicable nurse, which gives you a brief respite from the constant tension that the game provides. This area provides three main functions. A very much needed save point, valuable resources in body lockers opened by keys found within the game, and this chair, where you spend the gathered resources to upgrade your character's various abilities, weapon damage, 
or even the amount of resources you can hold by what can only be described as electroshock therapy. This area is unlocked in the game by finding a blooded door, where you'll find more of the backstory of the main character before looking into a mirror to travel there. Without reading these entries, you won't know anything at all about Sebastian. Although, to be fair, if you don't, you aren't missing all that much. I'm not expecting the Evil Within to compete with The Last of Us in terms of getting emotionally attached to the characters, but a little more time spent giving them some personality may have given the game makers another way to make players uncomfortable about the whole situation. Some of the boss encounters require some strategy of how to defeat them, and once you've finally managed to pull off the result is extremely satisfying. Other bosses are just bullet sponges with no other tactics required but are firing everything you possibly can into them until they end up finally falling, all while trying to avoid them killing you instantly if they touch you. Then comes the frustration. If they do manage to touch you, the bizarre autosave points reload you so you have to watch the entire cutscene before each fight. I have one certain boss, where I had no idea what I needed to do initially, I was dying repeatedly just to figure it out. This caused no end of frustration, Take this! but once it was finally defeated and receiving the achievement, what's in the box? Paying homage to one of my favourite films, it made it all worth it. <laughs> Nearly. Overall, this is a fantastic survival horror experience. It has everything needed to provide you with a horrific amount of tension and sweaty palms throughout. The beautifully designed environments often overshadow the incoherent storyline and personality stark characters. But once you get into the outstanding combat and versatility travelling through the gorgeous levels, you will generally forget this. The reduced aspect ratio takes a little getting used to, but you'll find it makes the experience better for it. It tries a little too hard on the gratuitous front, but occasionally it times its shocks just right. It can be exhausting to play, but for many players, that's the mentally gruelling challenge that they're searching for. Working on it. Just give me a little time.